Hello, everybody. It's good to see everybody today. We had a record-breaking crowd here at the church earlier. And uh, so I just want to say thank you, Jesus. We call them in from the north, south, east, and west. Amen. People that believe and want to receive. Praise God. And even if they don't want to believe or receive, when they get here and hear the Word, they're supernatural ears will open and then they'll hear and believe. We're going to talk about basically two things in the next few minutes. One, how do you know God hears you when you pray? Because there's people praying all over the place. And it's like, what's going on? If God's hearing them, you can't tell it. And so, and a whole bunch of different kind of groups other than believers. And the second thing is, what do you pray? That's a good thing to know, isn't it? This look in St. John. Um, yeah, well, it's St. John, but it's 1 John. You got St. John, 1 John, 2 John, and 3 John. We're in 1 John. Keep turning to the right after all the T's. Okay? So that's uh, 1 John chapter 5 and in verse. 15. If you know, here it is, you got to know. If you know that He hears us, how do you know He hears us? There's, you can actually know. It's not rubbing beads, rubbing ropes, and sitting in the box and lighting candles and all that kind of stuff. I'm, I'm just teaching around the Bible. The Bible doesn't say anything about that kind of stuff. It says, whatsoever shall ask. Number one, you ask. We know, there it is again, that we have the petition that we desired of Him. Now, I want you to look right up at the verse 14. And this is the confidence that we have in Him. There's 139 verses of Scripture in the New Testament alone that tells you who you are in Christ. So the confidence, you want confidence in God, not self-confidence, godly confidence in Him. We have in Him. We've got confidence in Him. How we got it in Him? Keep reading. That if we ask anything according to His will, He hears us. What's His will? Hold your Bible up. That's God's will right there. You no longer have to pray and then say, Lord, now if it's Your will. You don't have to pray that. You can look up in the Bible and see what the will of God is. If it's a matter of life and death, the Bible always says in Deuteronomy, choose life. Okay? If it's a matter of life and death, the Bible also said in Psalms 118, verse 17, that I will live and not die and declare the works of the Lord. So you don't have to pray, now Lord, if it's Your will, for me to live, let me live. If not, kill me, let me go to hell. No, you don't got to do that. Or heaven, no. You can pr pray the will of God, and it's the will of God for everybody. Okay? Now let's go back up to 13, verse 13. These things have I written unto you. See, we're not talking about off-shoot stuff. We're talking about things that are written. These things I have written to you that believe. Well, this is written to people that are believers. On the name of our Son, of the Son of God, which is Jesus, that ye may know. There it is again. You have a supernatural knowing. Know that ye have eternal life. There's no one have, no one have, no one have. It goes hand in hand. It's just like when you pray, at the end of your prayer, or even at the beginning of your prayer, you have this confidence, whatever it is you're praying for, you can just simply say, I have. Now you're not going by your five senses, you're going by what the Bible says. Do you have a knowing that you have what you prayed? That's what these verses, these three verses are talking about. Well, you can. If you're praying His Word, which is the Word of God, when you pray the way He says to pray, when you, when you pray Bible, you get Bible results. Isn't that good? 
When you pray Bible, you get Bible results. When you look up in the New Testament alone and see who you are in Christ Jesus, the authority He's given you in the name of Jesus, twice there it said the name of Jesus, the name of Jesus. When you use the name of Jesus in your behalf, you get your behalf answered on your prayers. Isn't that right? Now, just like this building here, of course, we got the front door standing open today, and it's the same temperature in here as it is outside, probably about 75 degrees here. Now, but if it got too hot, what would you do? Well, there's a thermostat back on the back wall. I'd just have somebody, uh, if they would please, go and put that thermostat on 72. Well, there's not one person in here, unless they're ignorant of thermostats, would say, why, that's the stupidest thing I ever heard in my life. It's 75 degrees in here. Why in the world would you want it on 72? You, can't, you cannot change the temperature of this room. And people would look at them like, cuckoo, cuckoo, cuckoo. Well, you can change the temperature of the room. Well, you can change the temperature of your life. You can set it on God's Word. If it's healing, Isaiah 53, 5, and then don't, don't, you know, just because you turn that temperature gauge back there to uh, 72 and say it got hot in here and got it to about 80 or something, and it got hot, especially with warm bodies and people, and you set that thermostat back there on 72, well, what's going to happen? Is it just going to change instantly? No, but the air conditioners would probably come on. The wind would start blowing around in here. The fans would start going. We don't have anything on right now. don't need it. But if it did, well, these fans would start going. There's four or five fans in here, and the air conditioners would start going and blowing, and it would cool off in here in about 15 minutes. It's the same way with your life. See, when you set your temperature gauge, when you set your gauge of life on who you are in Christ, you can't go wrong. When you set the temperature gauge, when you set the, when you set the scriptural gauge, you can say it like that, on Isaiah 53, 5, you're healed. Don't come off of it. I said, don't come off of it. Don't you touch that dial. That's what Shambach used to say all the time. Don't you touch that dial. God's got a blessing for you. And God does have a blessing for you. Amen. So I want to leave, this with, leave that with you today. That you ask, believe, receive as it is written. Verse 13. You know and you have confidence that you know you have whatever it is you petitioned for. Not because your five senses gave way to it, but because what you say is what you have according to Scriptures. Not what you see, what you say. All right. Now you will see it, of course. But uh, you have to stay in faith to say. And then verse uh, 15, you know and have again what you've petitioned, what you've said, what you've a petition, you write it out sometimes. That's probably good too. Then just stick with that to say you have it. It's not coming. That's hope. We're talking about faith here today. Amen. Faith is an eager... Faith is a... You always say it present tense. Hope, you always say it future tense. When do you believe you receive? When you hope for it? No. You believe you receive the second you pray. That is faith. As soon as you set that thermostat, you know good and well. Probably the next time you check it, it's going to be 72 in here. Then you get on the elevator, same thing. See, you call it the way you want it. Romans 4.17, call it the way you want it. And what happens is, is it changes. Even if you see no initial change, don't even feel nothing. And you're just sitting there enjoying it. You just, oh, it's nice and cool in here now. See, why? Because you set your temperature gauge. You set the gauge of life with your tongue, just like a big ship. They set that rudder. It may take a long time to get that thing to turn to the way they want it to turn. I mean, you look at the you look at the navigation system. You look at the old time bubble in the glass compass. It still says we're going this way. It still says we're going this way. And then you look around, enjoy your life a little bit. Look, oh wow, we are going that way. See, that's the same way with you. Whether you're healed, whether you're set free, whether you're healing, whatever it is, the second you receive is the second you start saying you receive. You receive with your words, not your feelings. And you know you got it. You have a good one. I want to encourage you. There's all kind of great 
Jesus is the breakthrough. Quit looking for the breakthrough. And Jesus is the breakthrough. Have a great one. Have a good one. Even in your finances, be blessed in every area of life. So say, Lord Jesus, come into my life. That's right. You got Him now. You take Him now. Take the baptism of the Holy Spirit. I receive the Holy Spirit now with evidence speaking in tongues. And then you begin to start speaking in tongues by faith. You have Him too and He has you. You speak in tongues every day. Pray and read your Bible every day and you'll grow, grow, grow. Don't, don't pray and don't read your Bible every day and you'll shrink, shrink, shrink. You don't want to do that. Listen to these videos. Just put them on continual play. Listen to them over and over and over and over again. And uh, whatever area of life that you need your boat to turn or your ship to turn, these are faith videos. What else would you have? Doubt videos? <laughs> have faith videos and let, your, let the course of your life. The blessing of the Lord maketh rich. Change your course to rich. You know what to do. You know what to do when you give. You know what happens. You know what happens when you don't give. So it's better to give. Amen. And then set your course. And set your tongue like a ready rider. Set your tongue like a ship rudder. Amen. And don't speak nothing but the blessing. Have a great one. Have a good one.